Hi, my name is Clark. I live as a sailor full time. Been doing it for 30 years. If you're a sailor, you live outdoors, heck, even if you live indoors, having a good knife is important. And a good knife is different than a knife shaped object in that a knife is sharp. In this video, we're going to tell you how to put a really nice edge on any knife and in a way that you don't have to have like a PhD in sharpenology. You just can't screw it up. I grew up in a family where nobody sharpened knives. Uh, my mother for the kitchen would buy cheap knives, use them till they weren't sharp, and then buy another cheap knife. Um, good knives are a pleasure to use, and a sharp knife is very much a pleasure to use. So when I got out of my own and I started buying good kitchen knives or general utility knives, I didn't know how to sharpen them. You know, in Boy Scouts, I was taught you take one of these and you rub this on it. And that's basically all I knew. I was smart enough to know that you had to keep the angle exactly the same every time you did it, but I could never do it. I'd be rolling it all over the place and I was always dissatisfied with how my knives came out. Till I found this. 30 years ago, I found this thing. It's called a Lansky Sharpener. We don't make any money off these. I, I know you can still get them. I checked that. So you couldn't get it on the Amazon store and we'll get a deal, but that's not why I'm doing it. It is the coolest thing. Anybody can put a razor edge on a knife with one of these. Let me show you how it works. I've abused the hell out of this knife. I used it in the boat remodel project. And among other things, I used it to cut the epoxy off my putty knives after it hardened up the next day. So I'm pushing it right into stainless steel. Anyway, it got abused and <laughs> well, it's child safe. This is Emily's number one kitchen knife. Um, again, it got a little abused in moving everything around. It got, I'm sure, pushed onto some metals. Uh, it has a few nicks in the blade. I'm not gonna worry about the nicks too much, but again, it's dull as can be. We're gonna bring these back to what they should be. And it's a little different what they should be for each knife. Okay, this is how the Lansky thing works. You've got these stones. Uh, it goes from extra coarse to extra fine. And quite honestly, I just use the center three most of the time. The extra coarse is for like actually making a knife. And the extra fine is if you want to produce razor blades, I imagine. <laughs> you take one of the stones and these little uh, bars here and you put them together such that these two are exactly parallel. That's easy. You just drop it on a table and tighten it down. And now you've got this deal where this rod is parallel to the surface of the stone. Then you take this uh, clamp and pretty darn simple. You put the knife in the clamp and tighten it down. The last thing is you decide what angle you would like every stroke to be at. And the thing has holes. Basically put this in the guide holes and slide back and forth. There's a 30 degree, 25 degree, 20 degree, and 17 degree. There's a little chart that comes with the product. And um, what it boils down to is 30 is for like, I don't know, carpet knives or axes or something. It just needs to be strong as heck because you can see it have a lot of metal supporting the blade if you were doing it at 30 degrees. 17 is if you want to make your own razor blades or exacto knives or you know surgical blades but it's a very weak edge sharp as heck but weak in the middle 20 is what i use for kitchen knives because they are cutting chicken and flesh they need to be sharp but they're not going to be abused and 25 is what i use for my outdoor knives still a little tougher i put a little oil on the stone this um might make it cut better. I don't know. I'm not that kind of an expert, but it makes it easier to clean the chips out. So it's well worth doing. Then you just uh, put the rod in the appropriate hole and just move the stone up the knife, working your way from one end to the other. Give it a couple treatments on one side, whatever you think is right, depending on how much you want to remove, how much you want to sharpen. Then flip it over, put your knife, your uh, rod in the exact same hole and do it again on the other side. And you can see that every stroke I take is precisely at the right angle to the blade. I'm not rounding the edge over. And you do this 
until you've taken off enough metal coarsely to bring the knife as far as you can with that stone. And then you just step up to a finer stone. And since I'm going to use this one again, I'll leave that one rigged for the other knife. And I'll rig a new one here. This is the medium. Again, I'll go to 25, or yeah, 25. Already, it's a huge difference. After I'm done, I just wipe a paper towel and wipe the oil off, and that takes the metal filings right with the oil onto the paper towel. Pretty trivial. You can start seeing now this little darkness that's forming. You can't see it on the coarse stone, but on the fine stones, you can actually see the metal filings come off into the stone. See that it's doing something. The coarse stones remove metal very fast because they're coarse, like coarse sandpaper. But like coarse sandpaper, they leave scratches. They, they kind of gouge as they go. So you use that to get the shape that you want. Then you switch down to these finer stones and you don't go right to the finest stone because this takes forever to do what it needs to do. Um, you take it down in steps and what you're doing now is really just leveling out that edge that you made with the, with the coarse uh, stone. That's probably enough. Um, I don't really want this to be super, super sharp anyway. I want it sharp enough that I can cut a line, but I abuse it, so I sharpen it often. This knife I want to put a better edge on, uh, partly because kitchen knife, you know, you're cutting a chicken up or something, you want to be able to do it without having to press right through it. But also, um, whenever I sharpen this and I pass it on to Emily and she forgets that I've sharpened it and a, a, a couple days later she's doing something in the kitchen, she goes, oh, thank you, this is so nice, it makes me feel good. So put this in just like the other one. I reach this one in deeper because it's such a big blade. And then back to the coarse stone first. We'll start working this blade. This one we're going to do at 20 degrees, not 25. Knife sharpening is one of those intentional living things. You're not throwing away just because you like don't have the capability to have a tool that works the way you want. You're buying one that someone showed you on TV, they cut a brick and then cut a tomato. Something ridiculous. You're taking the time to take a nice piece of gear bringing it back and making it a great piece of gear. And I find that satisfying. So much more satisfying than the disposable idea. And I don't mind spending a few dollars for like a good quality knife that I know I'm going to take care of. Um, in this particular case, I believe we got this one for free. Uh, it was dull. And Somebody richer than us takes hundred and some dollar knives and throws them away when they're dull. Yeah, it's a lot better already. Emily once suggested this could like be a business because people don't know how to sharpen knives. And I mean, I guess it could. Um, I like doing it, but I don't like doing it that much. Um, my dad's a retired barber and uh, he hired a guy that would sharpen his electric razor blades. And 
I looked into it later in life to find out what was involved just because I like looking up stuff. Seriously, you take a piece of glass, you put a piece of very, very fine sandpaper on it, oil it up, move the blade back and forth, and charge the guy 20 bucks. Um, <laughs> it just turned out it's one of the things in life that's super easy if you know what you're doing. So yeah, you could, um, or you can just make friends doing it. I have a chef friend that came aboard the boat and first time she came aboard the boat, I knew I was having this actual trained chef aboard and I had to make the galley right. So I took all my knives and I did this to them and I made them all really sharp. And one of the rules was when she was aboard the boat, I wasn't allowed to touch the galley. She owned it and uh, I just had to stay out. Fine with me. Um, anyway, she started cutting up some vegetables and she stopped after like the second cut and then did it again and looked at me and she said, how did you get this edge on this knife? Apparently she's, she hires her knife sharpened and she was expecting the worst, but I showed her this and I don't know, she might end up owning one by now. I haven't talked to her in a few years. I should always give the blade a wipe after I use a given stone because a little bit of the abrasive might be there and you don't want any of the coarse abrasive when you switch to the next fine abrasive. This tool makes the job of getting that angle right every stroke so easy that absolutely anyone can do this. In fact, if you wanted to make your own knives, if you cut a vaguely knife shaped object with a little ground taper to it, and then you used a kit like this to put the edge on it, you could make a knife out of a piece of appropriate steel. I mean, there's a lot to knife making. And if you're into knife making, you're not watching my video on it because there's guys that just worship this process. I don't think they use this tool because it's two training wheels for them. They'll use some big flat Arkansas soapstone thing, probably actually from Japan and, um, and worship it all up. But this works. Okay, let's see how we've got this. Yeah. That's an edge. I wish I had a microscope camera. I could just show you the difference there, but um, this would go right through anything now. Yeah. I've, uh, I've made a little razor blade. And uh, before, if you remember, I could do that safely. <laughs> I wouldn't trust that now. So, uh, oh, and uh, I looked at a knife sharpening video. I was a little surprised how much people, people really get into knife sharpening. Apparently it's a YouTube rule. If you don't shave the hair off your arm, it's not a proper knife, uh, knife sharpening video. Anyway, that's how I do it. Uh, I highly recommend this tool. Uh, we'll put a link in our store just cause we do, but you know, it's just buy it on eBay. I don't care. Uh, but this Lansky sharpener makes anybody into an expert. If you're looking for a good everyday carry knife, I've really enjoyed this Beagle by Olight. They sent it to us for free. We have a coupon down below. You'll get 10% off if you buy it. We get a little kickback. Um, I do recommend it. It's a nice knife. I don't use my old Gerbers anymore. I use this now as my uh, everyday carry.